Hey, Tree here. <clears throat> I wanted to tell a story that it's kind of a hard story for me to tell, but um, I I identify as a witch, which to me is an interfaith path in which we blend a lot of different religions and spiritual philosophies and create our own path. I've always been a do-it-yourself kind of person. And I was out of the broom closet for 10 or 15 years when we moved back to the Bible Belt in the southern United States. And um, I knew that in order for my young children to get along well in school that I needed to kind of dial it down and be a little more subtle, blend in more. But at the same time, I also didn't want to metaphorically paint my black child white, uh, you know, I, that would be horrible. A black mother would never tell their child to pretend to be white, maybe a hundred years ago to stay alive, but not today. And so I was, I was feeling a lot of internal conflict around who to be. I need to be myself. How do I honor myself? But how can I do that in a way that creates safety? Because the reality is there are people around here who think that witchcraft is the worship of Satan and that we're all going to go to hell and that we're trying to take other people to hell with us. And this to me is completely ridiculous. Satan is an idea from the Christian religion. That's like accusing a Muslim of worshiping Poseidon, the Greek god of the sea. It's just completely irrelevant. It's not a part of our pantheon. So, anyways, when we first moved here, it took me a couple of years to feel comfortable enough to tell some of our closest friends what our specific <laughs> beliefs were. And I did. There, there were a group of about three families who all had children about the same age as ours. And I shared, and it went over well. Despite lots of stress and tension up leading up to it, I went ahead and I shared. And it turned out fine. No one set me on fire, and we were all still friends. Now, flash forward. My son is um, turning seven, and I have a birthday party for him. We invite his best friend from school. And um, I didn't know them, but the friends that I had confided and come out of the broom closet to were at this party. Well, being a small community, the parents knew the other parents, and so they told our son's best friend's parents about our religion. And I overheard this at the party, but was kind of shocked and stunned. I don't think people realize how risky that is for us. I can remember being burned alive. And in this life, I have been bullied in a very real way. I'll talk more about that in another video. So it's not for you to go around and tell people what my spiritual beliefs are, especially if they're very radically different from the dominant paradigm around here. So I took lots of deep breaths and I tried to roll with it and then we get into the school year. Now this child and my son were best friends for a couple of years, but after this birthday party, things started to deteriorate until we got to the place where my beautiful, sweet, seven-year-old boy wanted to kill himself. <laughs> he said, Mom, I don't want to live. And I said, why, honey, why don't you want to live? That's a horrible thing to say. He's seven years old, for Christ's sake. He said, well, this boy at school keeps saying that I'm going to go to hell, that I'm going to burn in fire because we don't believe in Jesus. And I said, well, sweetie, I believe in Jesus. Jesus was a great teacher and a wonderful person. What makes these people say that? Well, we're not Christians and we're gonna burn in hell and I would rather just die. And he said, this boy had been playing this video game called Black Ops in which you try to get 
someone to kill themselves on one of the levels. This is just mortifying. These children are seven years old. And, um, and the bullying, the religious bullying is just ridiculous here. So my son does, my husband does some research to find out, is that true? Is there a part of this video game in which they actually encourage the player to try and kill someone by um, getting them to commit suicide? Turns out that's a real thing in one of those Black Ops games. And why would these parents, these good Christian parents, let their seven-year-old son play this game? And how on earth did a child get the idea that another child is gonna fry in frickin' hell? That's judgment. They told their child that our child was going to hell. He didn't come up with that on his own. It's horrible. My child wanted to kill himself. So, of course I was angry. Obviously, I'm still angry. My son was seven then. He would be 13 now, but he died seven weeks ago. During the years since that time, he didn't want anything to do with any kind of religion or spirituality. It was very clear that he believed that there was something much greater. But he wanted to explore that magic and mystery through science because religion wasn't safe for him. Spirituality wasn't safe for him. It breaks my heart to think that careless, judgmental people who believed themselves to be good Christians ruined this whole possibility of faith for my son. It's really tragic. So why, so why do we get jumpy around this idea of coming out of the broom closet? This is why. Yeah, they don't set us on fire, but the torment, the sadness, the bullying, it's real. So if, if you're a Christian, I beg of you, think about how you speak when you're around your children. Teach them to love and accept all their neighbors, not just the ones who go to church. And if you're any religion, I don't care what your religion, what your spirituality is, we can't afford to be haters. We can't keep judging people based on some stereotype. Now, my son had a great deal of mistrust and negativity towards Christians after this. Who can blame him? But I had to remind him frequently Sweetheart, not everybody is like this. Just because you turn on the TV and you find out that large groups of people say that it's a sin for a man to marry a man doesn't mean that all Christians hate gays. I wish more of them would speak up and say they don't. If we want to change the world that we're living in, We have to find the common ground. We have to look towards the things we have in common and love and care for one another. And when my son died, we were so lifted up by the local community. People gave us food, people gave us water, people gave us toilet paper. It's eight weeks later and I'm still using this toilet paper that people gave us. It's unbelievable the care that was poured out of a Christian community for a family who hasn't been in the area for that long. For a family who's not Christian. And we were wrapped in prayer and lifted up and cared for. That's the love. That's the demonstration of faith. Judge 
by actions. Judge by feelings. Judge by behaviors. Don't judge by labels. We don't have time for that. I love you guys. Thanks for listening to me rant. I hope wherever you're at, you feel safe expressing your true self. The rooster feels safe. <laughs> Take care.